Mr. ZQ, great effort out there this EUM. How do you feel? Did you guys enjoy the games? I think they were pretty cool. Great, great. How do you feel about the matchups you got this series against Finland? We got all the matchups we expected. But in the first match, definitely a lot more pizza. In the first match, it's not up to us if we win, it's up to opponent how bad the opponent draws. Uh, second match, like we knew they're gonna try to hit our three round of and we just went with the good matchups uh, for the overwhelm. And yeah, we just uh, drew poorly one game. Okay, I'm gonna jump straight into it here and address the big one, Mr. ZQ. Uh, what was going on with that uh, mystic shot that you used over Flock on Siva? What was that mystic? Oh, I bet casters were shouting it's a misplay. Okay, guys, you think that three people roping, uh, roping with two mana would not think about shaped stone in that spot? Like, please, shut. Like, we, we were aware that opponent can have shaped stone. It's just the line we took. You have to evaluate your hand. The way you win this matchup is tri beam. If you don't have tri beam, you need to have good units to trade. We had nothing. We had to be as greedy as we can, and worst case scenario what happens, we set up two units at 1 HP, and we set up a static shock, and we take 8 to the face. This was not the hand where you can play around Shapestone. You have to evaluate your hand and play accordingly. Like without... If this hand had Tri-Beam, you play Flock. Without Tri-Beam, you play uh, Mystic in the spot. If we Flock Severe, we, uh, we lose the game, 100%. Like that was like if you flock there with our top decks with the hint side, we, we would have lost anyway. And opponent draws. I'm really happy the way we played. I think we played uh, flawlessly this time. Like again, I told you guys there will be a point where people will not understand the uh, uh, difference between taking a certain line of uh, play between the misplay. We just like you have to evaluate your hand and choose the correct line, the winning line. Hmm, interesting. Don't you think you're in a much better position for the rest of the game, had you have flocked? Not with this hand. No score surf, no tri beam, no units to win. Look, you have no, no removal for the future units coming. I don't think we are winning from this spot. Again, if you see opponent's hand, yeah, of course you could say that we are winning. Mm, you did take quite a lot of damage in one turn against Overwhelm there. Don't you suppose you want to... You didn't want to take that shape stone damage? Yeah, and when opponent keeps shape stone, an extra card in the hand. And you have static shock, which uh, doesn't kill the target because of the shape later. And you have no way to kill the right, damage. Right. Um, uh, no, knowing now the cards that they did have, do, do you have any regrets? I don't think there is... Uh, like It's just the line we took. I don't think there is uh, any reason to regret. Like, we win on a, like We win automatically if opponent doesn't have shape there. Pretty simple. If opponent has shaped, we are still in the game. We have pretty good static on the following turns. And yeah, we are yeah, we are just playing further. We are still in the game. Like it's not like that Misty closes the gas the game on the spot. Like if we knew of what's in opponent hand, obviously we could have played differently. Without a uh, hand inside, we play uh, like I think that was the correct line. Like, we knew they have one uh, card in the hand from the beginning of the game, and the way they played, it indicated uh, Battle Fury, and in the end, it was just uh, three sisters. Yeah, and again, we lost to the top deck, like, uh, eventually. Like, Fury of the North plus Ex uh, Fury of the North plus Ex Like, if you think about it, Battle Fury doesn't beat us. Uh, Battle uh, the... Um, because we can just block. Uh, Battle Fury doesn't beat us. Uh, Fury of the North doesn't beat us. Exhaust plus Fury of the North only beats us. That was the only combination of cards there to win. A lot of people in chat are screaming right now that you made a critical throw there. What do you think? Guys, you for, for real, do you think that three men sitting and fucking talking when opponent has two mana, one mana, you have two mana, three men didn't uh, think about shaped stone, the opponent can shape shaped stone and we take eight? God, please. You are tilting me from being dumb. You, you think I'm dumb? Okay, Mr. ZQ. Uh, last couple of questions before you go and review the uh, games. Uh, how does this affect your world's chances? 
are we qualified for worlds this event doesn't uh, count towards worlds mm, okay and last question how do you intend to uh, split the winnings with your teammates how do you split evenly it's a team uh, team effort Thank you, Mr. ZQ, for taking this interview. And thank you to everyone at home. We will now be returning to our regular programming. All right, so before we jump into the, uh, in, into the draft, I'm gonna explain like our thought process before the preparation. Terrier stream, after the, after the, uh, the game talks so we like I took a, a peek on our lineup and like I knew they gonna like they gonna prepare extremely greedy lineup probably with two or three Targon decks with hash uh, because and they just like they just gonna face our like either ban dragons or or ban uh, Ezreal depending on how what they bring and uh, TLC and they just it's full Azir Aurelia and they gonna leave out TLC. Uh, we expected them to uh, just go full greedy on us. So we decided that we're gonna bring uh, only one to two greedy decks, uh, and then we're gonna bring a decks that uh, are good into the very greedy decks. That therefore we brought uh, the best uh, aggro deck that there is out there, the most consistent one, which is Burn. Uh, very like we like basically we brought we wanted to bring two decks not three two exactly that are good into Zoevi and the Targon deck like with the Aesol uh, and is good into the um, Overwhelm and Ashle Blanc uh, potentially Estimo and we wanted to bring three decks. Uh, that we want we want pick probably anyway uh, because uh, opponent uh, will assume that we can pick them and we'll play around them because those are our comfort picks etc we plan to play three two decks that we bring that we never played and uh, that would be countering their most uh, most of the matchups so we brought severe renekton and burn those two decks were like obviously extremely good into them. Uh, we expected them to ban S Draven and uh, Azir Irelia. They banned Severe and Ecton because they had no idea what's in the deck, so they just didn't want to. They just didn't want to the to play against surprise factor. So they had they had no idea what to play around. I don't play them. That's an okay ban. I like the like if they knew the deck, they would have probably banned as Draven. Uh, that was a better ban if you knew the deck at least. Without knowing what you are up to, uh, it's probably better to ban the severe Ecton Indeed, we actually planned to and like the consider it then banned the. They like they, they left open TLC. We assumed they gonna either open with Overwhelm or they gonna play second game with Overwhelm. We opened with uh, Baron because we knew it had no bad, bad matchups. Because again, we were aware opponents went f for uh, probably full greedy because we never brought aggro decks. There was no reason to take against aggro. They had to go for full value in uh, over all of their decks. Uh, so yeah, we had we knew that our Baron aggro had no bad matchups. Uh, so we opened with the burn aggro, and yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna continue after the first game. After we go through it, and we did the standard bans, obviously. Able already. I see Twisted Fate Fizz in Poland's lineup, and deep, not only deep, but Leona Aurelian Soul for Finland, as both players are playing Ezreal Draven, which is no surprise, especially from Poland. I know Alan is a big fan of the archetype. I love to see, you know, these decks. I'm, I'm, I love, you know, I think we talked about Ezra Baby at the very start of the stream, how much we love that deck, but just in general, TF is a deck that, you know, it seems a bit weird to say. And in again, hindsight, looking back at the, the meta before. The reason for TF, like, we brought basically, we expected the ban TLC, uh, Azir Irelia, and uh, S Draven. So we brought uh, the Dragons and the TLC were just a bait uh, that opponent will, like, it was the bait for, like, Estimo, Ash Blanc, Overwhelm. Like, we expected uh, the. Uh, they're gonna bring two of the three decks and those decks were just uh, like it depends like what they ban again but uh, considering what we've seen like this is obviously okay we knew they're gonna leave open a tlc and they're gonna try to target it so we knew this is a soft ban for uh, this is soft ban 
there could be some mind games and they could pick a, a deck that is weak into this. Uh, but we didn't expect them to pick a Zoevi at all. The, uh, this uh, into us. And then again, uh, like we we made our lineups very polarized because like if they go for Zoevi, they lose to this and this. If they don't go for Zoevi, they lose to this, this, and this. So we made like and this is TFS is into Zoevi is fine because we play two mind melt. Uh, so it was very polarized, uh, and they had to basically flip. And we knew they uh, probably didn't. They went full ham with in the Isol Leona with like triple Eclipse, triple Isol, just to beat our Shivana Isol because they should. They probably assumed that we are going uh, with the Shivana Isol. If they so we are pretty comfortable opening with Baron because it literally had no bad matchups. All of those were good. Like as Raven is fine. Uh, this is fine. This is fine. Th this was our worst matchup, but we knew they can't open it. This was soft band, basically. This is fine, this is fine, and this is fine. Like, our, like Bern was our best deck to, to open up with. And, uh, yeah, again, then as we, had, uh, we could open with either TFEs or S-Draven, because, again, this deck is soft band, and S-Draven and uh, TFEs has no bad matchups into those. So, uh, yeah, we just pick one. It's like, we, it literally doesn't matter. Whichever deck is just more consistent. Yeah, 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 yeah Fraxeric. There was, like, something. We, that like we were discussing, there's something that we've overlooked because we. The only reason we went with S Draven, like S Draven has the be like the same matchup in uh, the same matchups as TFEs against them, and the only reason we went with S Draven because we didn't play it at all and like we we're like oh, I should go. we're gonna play one game of S Draven it's fine like we knew what they're gonna pick and it's like it didn't matter if we pick TFEs or S Draven it's the like it's both are very good into uh, what they had so it it really didn't matter. We were used to seeing Renekton and Sivir together, but that's not an overwhelm deck. That's a Demacia deck with Renekton and Sivir for Poland. Just realized. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Very... I've, I've seen this deck before. I, I've, it's it's one of the more you know like underrated uh, mid range decks out there, and I'm, I'm I'm surprised to see Poland bringing it. Really, really exciting. Oh, here we go immediately. Well, these, I mean, are, these are the bands. These are the bands we like to see. Mongo. I think we're back to our comfort zone of seeing, of seeing Lissandra and I'll the bigger band. He, LC Man. makes it through for Poland. Finland okay with seeing this deck played. They are bringing deep, which is a deck that, you know, notoriously one of the reasons it became somewhat popular in the tournament scene is because it has a good matchup against TLC. It has ways, obviously, with Nautilus to, to play around the Watcher's effect, Obliterate effect, and uh, maybe that is the reason why it has not been banned. I mean, they but, have deep, they have deep yeah, so it's not exactly. surprised that it's not banned. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they also have Overwhelm, so it's, it's likely... I think Poland is going to refrain from bringing Lysandra Trondo. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think they know that uh, Finland may be trying to target it. And uh, it'll be interesting. Oh, we see Burn. Ooh. Full on Burn versus. Our, this is this is really good for Finland, though. Yeah, really good for Finland. It's not. Sure maybe again, so many mind games here, and uh, some different polarized matches. It's not like good for Finland. TLC. If you expect, you know, deep, for example, you might bring Burn. So a lot of different uh, considerations to make, mm. that's and what that's, that might be what happened here. Poland opting to bring. The but again, you have deck, to be aware about be like a Burn deck without Azir or without Darius. Wow. <laughs> again, I'm gonna repeat. We knew this deck won't have too much of early game, and. Uh, the, like and it won't have too many of good trades into us. Like we knew that the only way they can uh, really stabilize if they have perfect curve, and it's not easy to get perfect curve when they are l l playing very few early drops. And we knew that like the crucial card in this matchup is spacey. Without spacey, uh, Burn is favorite. If you have two to three of spacey, uh, Targon would be probably favorite. But without it, and also you need to run the. Um, Lifesteal, you need. And considering there are Leona in this, there is a chance they don't even have the Lifesteal unit in it. It's like they have to be choose between Sunforger and uh, yeah, Lifesteal. And again, against those, like uh, you, we have Fervor, so it's not a big deal. Dude, I think Finland read Poland really well here. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, they think we're gonna bring Overwhelm or Deep, expecting the TLC. And we're gonna and we're gonna bring in our best deck against their their aggressive decks, and uh, they they got the matchup they wanted. Next level mind games. That's what this format is all about, man. About predicting how your opponents thought. I think they didn't. Okay. This Leona is deck we don't know. Exactly. I think they expected dragons. Uh, they picked a deck against dragons. I don't think they were uh, like I don't think this pick was directed towards this. Like they never want this to face TFEs or as Draven. This is auto lose for them. Yeah. Uh, they needed to either hit dragons or only dragons, basically. Like, this is only their good matchups. I don't know. I, I don't think. Ah, uh, maybe into TLC uh, this deck would be fine. Into. Yeah, into TLC it would be, should be fine. 
because they have the stun units, and it's like a, basically another combat trick to. Pre uh, yeah, so they wanted TLC or dragons. That's why they picked opened with this. Those three are their bad matchups. Right. Why did you go TF That being said, I've won many games on ladder. You said it's over and TF beats all? No, no TF beats dragon over on as well. Or, or mid range type decks. So yeah. there is a chance, yeah. of course. But, but so does his Draven. Slurry is not coming in. It didn't matter. Walker, Dragons, Clutch, Eclipse, Dragon, Leona. And there we see Kapada on the, on the webcam and Alan's EQ, the two captains of these two teams, the two obviously superstars defending these two countries. And right away, the triple one drop, Dream, that aggro, and, and more specifically, this deck tends, tends to love to see early on. Yeah. Here. And because Shango wanted to uh, as Draven, yeah. so we went with as Draven. The, the it didn't matter for us. With some battle casters thrown in as well. <laughs> see you with it. Damn, that pizza looks pizza. pretty good right now. Dude, I'm hungry, oh my I'm god. I have some oatmeal. <laughs> like, <laughs> Baron beats <laughs> everything, <laughs> this beats everything, oh, and as Draven beats everything. We had very good matchups. All right, here we go. Uh, I assume a, a Legion Saboteur will, will go down here, and then we're going to see that followed up with uh, potentially a second Legion Saboteur into the Ooh. Doomkeeper. Oh, we see a Legion Rear Guard Very as well. late game hand for Finland, so though. Here, we talked about the, yeah. the fact that you might... So we know they kept two cards. Like, in this matchup, you don't keep two cards unless you have early game. So at this point, we knew they have either Goat or the Hulk, Stunning Hawk, yeah? Uh, we ask, like after a short uh, short talk, we we probably assume they have no goat in the deck because again, they were they were supposed to bring very greedy lane up against us, and the only two drop they should have technically is uh, just ho stunning hawk. There is no reason to bring this uh, the three six two drop. There is no reason to bring goat for those. We only expected uh, the hawk, and against hawk, uh, developing deal like here is more damage than uh, not. Like, we, we knew basically they have the stun here. And we just were contemplating if you want to open or not. The problem is if you open here, you uh, you run off the uh, you run out of the board space on turn 4. So you need to... You, you actually want opponent to trade here. Therefore, developing is better. You might have, on paper, a good matchup against Burn. You might have different tools to, to stop that game plan, but already... The Solari sound like they're great, but everything else is going to be yeah. four or five mana. You have to, but, seen this before with Dragon. But that Solari, but I just want to say that Solari sound Also, we know this card is another two drop, probably. It's either two drop or a Leona. Like, we knew that, uh, like, they can't keep anything else in this matchup if they play correctly. So, yeah. It's amazing here. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah, really good. It really helps pulling like back. It, it takes a lot from this crazy attack. Like this large hawk is huge, but I, I agree with you completely. They need to. No, we want. To, okay, so uh. we actually wanted uh, them to stun that the, the two one. You don't want them to stun rear guard. You want to connect face with the rear guard. You didn't want to drag uh, to get the stun away. This pushes more. Like this pushes more damage. I mean, it pushes the same amount of the damage. In fact. Also, no, hold on, is this pushing more? No, you don't play the rare guard here even. I think we play Doomkeeper because Doomkeeper is more damage. Also, we run out of the board space on uh, turn 4. But there is one thing to think about. Like, you can keep Doomkeeper for turn 4 to pull uh, with the 1-1. One, one. Like, we knew they're gonna trade into 2-1 with this. So, you can play rare guard, you're gonna deal one less damage. But then, on turn 4, you, uh, you next turn you can go uh, the... Uh, the free mana into Dunkeeper, Dunkeeper on turn 4 to drag this with the 1-1. One, one. Uh, but if we draw another unit, like House Spider, Dunkeeper, like just two more units that we're gonna be able to play on turn 4, we're gonna run out of the board space. So it's close. Both lines are fine. Uh, otherwise, uh, they need to find something like a single combat, maybe potentially yeah. a neighbor. Like basically, as a we know that card, like the our Fearsome will not connect on turn 4 because this is another Hulk. Or Leona. Seven tour as well, so it is a, a good start, I guess. Turn two, five damage being pushed is great, but the sun, the Sunhawk getting a two for one, you know, blocking here and still surviving is obviously pretty ideal for Finland. Sishu still feeding his his large brain with that big pizza. Gotta gotta get all that glucose in there to empower the next level four thousand. Another Sunhawk is good, but yeah, you're gonna have to again. You're using it here. It's, it's not. It's decent. It's decent. Like like you're taking some damage, but we, we gotta keep in mind that they have a lot of strong top decks within this. Tree. Like I said, I, I'm pretty sure Solaris Arm Forger is at the very least a two of in this deck. I would argue even a three of even, mm -hmm. and uh, that that can really just bring it back because this this aggro deck, you know, it's very good. Like at, the at this game. point, we knew this this is most likely Leona, because they drew two. Like this was from the top deck, so it's either third Sun Sun Hulk, which is unlikely, and it's more likely Leona. So we basically you know, knew that they have guaranteed Leona at this point. If we didn't top deck the, if we didn't top deck the spider, open attacking would be better. 
Oh no, we, I don't think we play even spider. No, no, never mind. Open attacking was not better. Because we, we wanted to play ruinous path. Hmm. This turn was pretty close. Yeah, again, open attack uh, leaves us vulnerable to things like... Like, if you open attack here, it leaves us open into stuff like uh, concerted and like a uh, single combat. Hmm. Single combat doesn't matter against Leon anyway. Concerted uh, does matter here. Like, it's very close to open here or not. The problem is if you open here, you're gonna... Like, this will... If you, this draws you a unit, you go for the trades, you roll with two, with, two, with two units on the board. Yeah, if you go for the value trade on this. Uh, and this blocks here. We push three damage this turn. We put him at 12. We have two left, units left over. You develop fr uh, three units next turn. If this draws you a unit, you might run out of the board space issue next turn. So there is a lot of things to consider here. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty crazy, but again, we, we see three one drops here, but the moment they come in one... That is huge. The yeah, really good top tech there. Massive. Really, really good top tech. Yeah, like now you play Leo, now you shut down the Merciless Hunter, and all of a sudden... Why did like, you, you think Leo knows really Sunforger? Like, because we didn't think they're gonna run Sunforger. It was more likely they would have the 3-2 uh, lifesteal than Sunforger. Again, in favor of Finland. This is looking amazing for Finland. They, I think Poland knows they're going to get a slate here onto the Sunhawk pretty much yeah. no matter what. So they're going to maybe want to save the Runa's Path. It's going to be activated now. They want to use it when they can yeah. and not play the pressure spike this turn because they're just out of fuel already. I mean, they played exactly. so many one drops that this is what tends to happen with this deck. But it is true that that, that Solari Sunhawk draw was much better than a three drop as well because it enabled the single combat here this turn too. We didn't think they have uh, yeah, Sunforger in the deck. Because it's the, more uh, likely they have Lifesteal, uh, the free two, um, than Sunforger. They're losing two units. Uh, I forgot that that's that so hard to vulnerable, but this is amazing. No, Finland. basically here we may we may even see the reason why you replay Ruinous Path because you want to draw uh, Rhine Runner for next turn. Like you want to draw like like if you think about next turn, you need refill. You need refill. Like a single combat here, but I don't think it's uh, ultimately that necessary. I mean, they're they're, they're going down to. Uh, 14 and effectively 12, but they may just go for it, yeah, they could just make And we, you won't be able here, to play Ruinous Path next turn. So if you, uh, anyway. like, the problem is, if you, next turn, if you draw, like, Fervor, you play Spider into Pass, opponent develops, and we are fucked. You need to draw another unit. Like, Spider is not worth here. Because Ruinous Path coming down later won't matter. You need to draw a, 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 another unit now. No, next turn, Ruinous Path would be bad, because... I guess next turn you could use Ruinous Path uh, without the damage. I guess, yeah, you can make that argument. Worst case scenario, you can use Ruinous Path without the damage, right, to cycle. Or I'm, I'm, I don't understand why they go for this, though. Um, I, I don't understand why they're... Yeah, this is... I guess maybe That's 100% incorrect single combat. Yeah, maybe. With two mana still up, that is the you always keep now. single yeah, combat yeah, in the yeah, spot yeah, for that's fervor. Very good, that's a very good point. We have two bottom, cards in hand. And it's not like, like you, know, you keep that for fervor like for later. Anything, so keeping Leona at one health is, is still very good. As next turn you can play Raven. Uh, they prevent two damage, which is a big deal. As now they're going to go down to 12. It's better to be at 12 than to be at uh, 10. Yeah, good old Spanish math right there. <laughs> as this is the turn to play Raven, yeah. And level up Leona. Level up Leona. The Sunhawks, of course, Brian Adabrick effect. So just on curve level up. This is a, I mean, Leon is a card that I have not seen played or leveling up in a long, long time, Mogwai. It's been a while, but Ravan is a big part of this process and a big part of getting value from her going forward. That being said, no life steal. So still any kind of damage that is pushed, any kind of burn that is pushed is a problem because your, your health will dwindle. And we don't know exactly what the deck for Finland looks like. We don't know if it's tech for aggro. We don't know if it has Sun Forgers and, and Fang. We're gonna assume so, but- I mean, it it's, it's, a, it's a Solari card. Like it should be- Yo, should we should we got some fucking shocking. big really pizza. On there and losing yeah. their, their Raven. But uh, Poland is just going wide as much as they can. And uh, they draw into an Iron Ballista. But the problem is they would become- be it would be, I guess you would be, you'd just be trading the- You always the, open here. Yeah, there is no decision. The, the Ballista, so maybe not really a key Play to, to, to play here, especially if you expect a Sunforger. I, th I think we're gonna see a, a concerted strike here. Yeah, I think you have to. I mean, again, because you don't have healing, you can't take any damage. Your, your health is worth that much more. You have to really be proactive with it. You're not caring. You're not caring about, about developing your own game plan because you'll get there eventually when you get to you know higher mana uh, totals. But right now, it's all about minimizing damage as much as possible, even if it's if it's yeah. you know, spending five. No, it was to, to, heavily to unfair for Finland. And I, I like this block because what this does is it prevents the uh, the ruin. This was heavily favored for us. The, the matchup. From, from being enabled here, because there's no slays happening. There you are with your bingo again. Ruin, desert. <laughs> One of these words has to be in here. 
It's not? Alright. I know what's going on. Did you play Goat uh, Spaces in the deck, Kepada? If you didn't, there is no way it's favorite for you. If you don't have Goat plus Spacey, you're underdog in this match. If you do run Goat and Spacey, it's a favorite for you. Not in your brain. I didn't check <laughs> the deck list. Now 14 I didn't know Goat I have raised. So too many casts together. Too many, too many words that I've heard you, you speak. I've got a very good understanding of your, your There's a decimate. That's spooky. And still um, no healing from Finland, so... And they've used single combat, they've used Concerted Strike, they don't have any more strike effects, they have a summon which is slow speed, can't react to a Noxian Fervor, for example, if it's played, if it's top deck next turn, and that could be a problem. Hush won't do anything to, to stop Noxian Fervor. They could, like, if they played the Solari Soldier, they can stun one of these units, and then they can uh, remove another one with Sunburst, uh, but ultimately, I, I still, I, I believe that, you know, the you have to play, I mean, you just play the, the Dragon here, it just represents so much damage, it forces the opponent to trade into something, but they're gonna, they're gonna go for this, the, the sunburst. And all you need is one unit to have that Noxian Fervor activated. I mean, I mean this 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 sunburst allows, like, they can go for a, for a very, very powerful open attack here, but no matter what they do, they, they don't kill. They they, they drop yeah, them down a yeah, three. definitely not, definitely not. You have too many blockers and too many, yeah, there's not, not a way to push enough damage to kill here. Um, and obviously if you stun a unit, then that's the unit that you keep, that you, that you don't worry about blocking or not, because that's the one you need for Noxian Fervor if you top deck it, so... You're happy with stun happening here. An awkward hand for, for Finland, just Doesn't not having just all the at right... At this point, you have to, you, you, you may as well target the fearsome one. And uh, you stun the house fighter here. In Poland, seeing as they have to be laughing because when I play against you know any targeting based decks and they have you know seven mana, I'm thinking you know they have star shaping, they have the fangs, they have single combat, they have so many ways to heal so much that my, my game plan is doomed. But in this case, uh, not really any of those cards in hand. Actually, a pretty bad. Oh, you didn't know the interaction. I see. Will we from... see another back to back decimate top deck? Like this is really scary. This not, is not a good deck. In any, you're gonna have to see the top deck for Finland. It has to be a good one. It has to be life steal. Oh, ruin runner. runner, single oh. combat. With wait, the wait, 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 no, 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 they, they have the single combat, that's huge, they can play, they, they have to play a dragon, they have to play a dragon here, it will, wait, it, it will, um, it's a skill, so, so, so it'll trigger the spell shield here, mm -hmm. they have, they actually have to single combat, I believe, no, they, I don't think they, no, they just block, they just block, they're fine, you're pushing one damage with the ballista, possibly, you can't attack with everything, does that mean that you have no, so here, to try and end it with the there was server, one more line, combat. There was one more line uh, that we open pass. If we open pass, they play uh, Eclipse, we would have won the game. Based on in the hindsight. Uh, but I think they would have taken pass back in this spot. Here, so I mean, I think this is it. I think this is GG. You're forced to attack to get value from these overwhelming We had a uh, harsh single combat. Not, yeah, but you, like, we can't, possibly. like... The thing is, in order to block into this, you have to, um, you have to sacrifice this. Like, at this point, we knew that, uh, like, we were thinking, we were thinking. Like, that's what, like, I was, yeah, I was thinking. Like, if we, you don't develop Ruin Runner here, and we open pass. And next turn, if you develop, and try to go for lethal. And we keep Ruin Runner for potential top deck fervor. We just played too fast here. Because if you go for like a uh, next turn potential lethal with something and you tap out, then uh, we have good odds. Because you need to go for lethal next turn. You're gonna like if you pass and you play Eclipse Dragon this turn, uh, you don't have mana for harsh single combat if you passed back. Like, you don't know what we would have done if we passed, probably, at this point. I think they're, they're smart. They know what the threat is here with 3 HP on the Nexus. I mean, like I said, it was Decimate. At this point, it had to be Decimate. And, and you can see you can see the stress, because whenever you're facing these burn decks, you're always like, oh my god, they top deck Decimate. They, they top deck Decimate. They did, they did, didn't they? And they see it, and now, now they know. Now they know they won. Single combat with the Eclipse Dragon onto the Rune Runner after the Spell Shield was bopped, and that is game one, ladies and gentlemen. Finland defeats the aggro deck barely. Barely manages to make it out alive there. Like, what you could have done, you could have bluffed uh, star shaping by passing back. You could top deck uh, the. You could top deck the free to lifesteal if you have single combat or concerted. And you could play around play around the decimate this way. If we, because if we had decimate and you develop there, we just win. And if we decimate into star shaping, we lose. What do you think is, is their choice now? You always cast decimate? No. If we had if we top deck decimate, 
there is a chance uh, there is a pass. Because we knew that you won't run Sunforger in the deck. The only punish would be if you run... But there is no way if you have Fangs into single combat, you do it in case of Fervor. And you didn't have uh, the lifesteal earlier, so you would need to top deck it. I mean, the hint side, we would have still lost. But there was... Uh, I'm talking about alternative plays that could have been done. I just feel like the deck can do well against everything. I feel like the matchup against Ezreal Draven is also pretty even for the most part. Um, because it can it can outvalue Ezreal Draven. The nice pick here. I mean, I think we had pretty obvious pick. So I, I also like, know that we, really feels we have only three decks to play, against like S-Draven, uh, Baron, and TFEs, mm -hmm. so and we know what you're gonna play, we have all good bad matchups, so like, what is our best it doesn't matter for us what we like, pick. Actually, like, we are never playing here uh, Dragons, and we are never playing uh, TFC in this spot. It's but always S-Draven, Baron, and TFEs. Forever, but you know, for a day or two at least. <laughs> if you make, if you make like, the only reason why we didn't go for the TFEs is S-Draven. That's the thing, when you're in a situation... Uh, and but again, if you go... Like, S Draven has a good matchup, except of Baron. So we know that you... Right? Mm -hmm. You could uh, go for S Draven, but like, the problem... I'm not sure why you bring S Draven when you want to leave open uh, TLC. That's just... I don't know. You're limiting yourself. That's just... Uh, yeah. Maybe you... I mean, to keep, to, to keep, uh, keep us away playing from playing Dragons. But actually, you want to play into Dragons, because you have... Uh, you have other good decks into dragons, and bringing one more good deck into dragons like doesn't like will not make us play it anyway. Just as Draven like was like so useless for you to bring into the lineup. You don't think TFE is good into Draveness? Hell no, Draveness is favorite into TFEs. Like Draveness farms TFEs. Holy shit! It's like yeah, massively. As Draven loses to TFEs. What? What kind of version of S Draven or TFEs you need to run to make it the other one? Maybe, okay, maybe I'm, I was playing against bad TFEs players, but I have 80 to 85% win rate against TFEs with S Draven. So maybe my, I don't know, maybe I was just playing against bad TFEs players, who knows? Well, makes sense as well, because uh, it, it does well against TLC. I'm not I'm not super sure about the, the Twisted Fate Fizz matchup, I'm not sure who... Oh, this is the win con? Win, right? Always so it makes been, sense. Been. Yeah, I know that Fizz is win con, but if you don't get Fizz into suit up, you don't win. Like Fizz, Fizz on its own doesn't win you the game. That's the thing. You need to draw Fizz first of all, and you need to draw suit up. Like there are those conditions you need to meet to win the matchup. Without the Fizz and suit up, you just don't win. Well, maybe even on an attack turn where they're able to push some more damage after the Rolling Sand is played. <laughs> that is a turn in which uh, Finland should drop that Rock Hopper because it also makes sure that Mercer's yeah. Hunter uh, is not really a good drop next turn uh, necessarily. Uh, the Rolling Sands is very easy for a deck like this. To also, uh, like as Raven, Spider, Hard Mulligan for as Real, which the and, uh, that keeps it uh, for later. One that will be the because sands. this is the only so way you lose the feast, and then you just keep up uh, the Elusive for that. that uh, their ideal three drop play, you don't want to play like not a heavy Mulligan, but you keep as Rain in opening hand fall into the Roiling Sands. And at this this turn, because you're going to be blocking with the unit anyways, unless you plan on using the Shapestone here defensively, I'm going to explain the Kepada. One health, uh, toughness. We were all aware of the Shapestone so this is different, being right? possibility. Exactly, yeah. this changes, this changes. But it's still, you know, okay, you get a good trade on the Kai Reaper. But that wasn't a misplay, you know, that was a line of play that we took, <laughs> that we wanted I mean, I to take. an okay sacrifice to make if you're pulling, you obviously are still attack. I think you still attack with everything. I think you're, it's not worth losing the damage. Well, I mean, it's, it's a pretty mm -hmm. strong, yeah, like, yeah. I really like this play. Yeah. Really like it. Getting, getting rid of that saboteur is really important. That skill will proc once more, and, and now they take six damage instead of seven, and they remove that one damage for later. They still a very late yes. curve though. Very late curve here. From well, I, mean, well, I mean, next, next, next turn, turn they'll have they a yeti. Play yeah. the, the ancient yeti, and uh, the other ancient yeti is not a bad draw either, because in a couple of turns it'll also be five mana. So they can like, curve. They can curve ancient yeti into ancient yeti and into wall claw, but that does limit their place to one per turn. But they are stabilizing here, and like I said, this is this is tough. Because if you play the House Fighter this turn, then you're missing out on some momentum because you would like to be able to play Merciless Hunter into Merciless Hunter here. But if you yeah. play Merciless Hunter, then that Rock Hopper is going to love trading into her. Exactly. You know, making use of that three power. Yeah, they kind of drew poorly this match.
Yeah, that's that's. I mean, they had good they're opener, but they're, again, they're, they're gonna keep that um that ruthless raider in the back because they don't want to trade into the doomkeeper. You, the, they yeah, didn't yeah, carve into four. If they, here. oh no, they have yeti for this then. That was actually the best case scenario. Vulnerable, right? Never mind. It's granted vulnerable. You're just pushing more damage in this case. I think it's Genki to. I mean, it's still bad matchup for them. That thing has vulnerable. Yeah, I like the the trade they did here. This actually makes sense. This is better. Otherwise, uh, that 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 vulnerable is just too strong, uh, and, and you really want to be able to blind the Bakai Reaper. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Ancient Yeti is enabled, and they can lead off with uh, that was a really good to topic for the, us with the Spider, and follow that up with the Merciless Hunter, and try to spread out. Uh, we see another Ancient Yeti draw by the Triple Finland. Yeti. When they if they get to this late game, they're definitely going to be okay. I mean, they have the curve already with the four mana Ancient Yeti now, the five mana next turn. So yeah, it's back, almost unwinnable like unless, unless Agro breaks. Breaks. I think see how much damage here, but yeah, uh, how much pressure can? How much pressure can can Poland really push in here with this damage with the Bakai Reaper? You have possibly to get vulnerable on. They maybe need maybe to throw Hulk basically on turn one, just to make it so it trades with the Doomkeeper. Like without Hulk on turn one, I don't think it's no, no, good no unless it, opponent breaks. This Asian Yeti makes things really awkward because yeah, you're going wide, but you haven't dealt enough damage and you're running out of gas. I mean, you're gonna deal these. So here are the couple of lines. Three one. Obviously, you know there's. But I think the like the best line like you just want to pre like you want to preserve your. Uh, you want to preserve your uh, this unit, and by pulling this, we, we accomplish nothing. They're gonna trade with this into this uh, regardless. Uh, so just pulling this, getting the kill off. They go we're gonna set this at 1 HP, and we still gonna push 5 damage this turn. We're gonna set them at 9, uh, then they are at 6. So And we have the full board refill, and we know the next turn they're gonna play probably only one unit. So we are looking at 4, uh, four units board, at least next turn. Yeah? They have only two units, so we know that we are pushing at least three damage next turn. So opponent is already at three HP. So all we need to do top deck is just three HP, uh, three damage uh, card. Unless they have a troll chant or a freeze, then we have to take uh, into that cons into consideration that we have less damage. No more, no more mana for Finland. So you push the Doomkeeper on the three one, you make that trade happen. Purchase pass gets through, and then one of the Bakai Reaper and the Merciless Hunter gets through. Probably the the Bakai Reaper. Yeah, so. but, that's, but that's five damage. Drop him down to nine when they're with, running this with though. Verver and with you know the late game. There's not gonna be a lot of pressure from Overwhelm for at least nothing on the next attack token turn. Definitely maybe two more. So you have a lot of turns to draw into decimate to draw into you know more one drop. Yeah. Just go wide again. You're playing one Yeti per turn. You get good trade, sure, but you're gonna be you're gonna be behind in like the unit parity for still the next few turns. I think. They're blocking to the Merciless Hunter, good call there. They're taking 5 damage, going down to 9. Like, SF. right now you're, you're still behind in unit parity, and next turn you're playing one more card, and you're gonna have two units with Housefighter yeah. coming down, and it's up at 0. Like, this is, this is still yeah. good damage. And that's a, that's yeah. lethal if they, they don't have block, freeze. When, when this Yeti attacks, because of things like Troll 10, you don't block, because you don't want to give any chance for Finland to, to get, you know, not maybe not parity, but, you know, advantage a bit closer together. Now you have 5 units attacking again, and you're able to push more damage through by going wide. Yeah, that's true. No block here, you just ignore this completely. Plays have it here, and you're happy with it. Look at this. I mean, this yeah. is a big swing once again. Yeah, that's and that's good. perfect that's object. Object. The fervor, Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. It. you're on point. On point. This is this is what aggro is all about, and this is why Overwhelm can't do anything against it. One play per turn is not enough when your opponent's playing and going so wide, and you don't have any good spells to answer on the stack. You can play a troll stand here to stop some damage from coming through, but the ping from the from the saboteur bringing down to eight, three more damage coming in, the fervor and the decimate, I think is gonna do it. I mean, the question is when will they resort to the fervor? Uh, right now, like besides Besides uh, a, a tech like, for example, three sisters, what there is other no point playing does the to interact with the card this in fervor. They have nothing, right? In case of the random ice shard, okay. oh, you can't feel one hundred percent safe, but most of the time you're gonna feel pretty safe. They could have ice shard as long as you just use it on the house. But we knew they shouldn't be having ice shard in the deck because again, they shouldn't be taking into the aggro lineup. They should be having a very greedy deck. The game win for Poland occurs here. Decimate into fervor. They find the perfect card. We're talking about it. How they just went too wide. And ancient yetis are too slow to handle there from Finland, so game two goes to Poland, ties the series one to one, and then once again we're going to. And now it's just between Kiefis or S Draven. Finland moves on and faces Turkey. Like we don't care which deck we pick. Like both have uh, good matchups. We know they want. Here we know they go for overwhelm or deep, most likely overwhelm, and yeah, into overwhelm we just pick our best deck. Uh, it's either the Fizz or Dress oh, oh, Raven. Didn't matter really much to, for us. Much lower, Alan. Yo, Jay, thank you for the four months, man. Appreciate it. It was Dragons. You want Dragons into Overwhelm. I mean, yeah, I guess we teched it a bit better, but we no, we had too slow of the Dragons to go into Overwhelm. I don't think it was Dragons. 
<coughs> also, they can pick as Draven because they know that we won't go for TLC as Draven. Like we assume they can pick as Draven still if they are smart because they should know we are, we are not going for TLC. Like I, if I was Finland, I would just pick as the Raven in this spot. It has only like it has good matchups into 50-50 matchup. As Raven is a super favorite in draw overwhelms, it is because you have only Severe and Ruin Runner. Those are the only cards that are threats for the overwhelm. And again, you need opponent not to draw drive him. Do you you think that overwhelm is good into as Raven and TF is? My friend, <laughs> it's not. TF feast and as driving goes like a butter knife through the overwhelm. Especially that you don't have ice shard in the deck against the, the TF feast. Why no Timo is in your lineup? Because we expected uh, them to either target TLC, target uh, Nasus Thresh Isol, or target uh, Timo. And uh, they could have brought their own Teemo, they could, like there was a lot of things they could have done. We went with the strategy that was the safest for us and most efficient too. And pay, paid off because we, yeah, we got the matchups we wanted. Just it wasn't in the cards. So obviously we keep Beam, Sentry and Flock, those, all of those cool cards are good into. So they should, they always keep here Ruin Runner and Severe. Whoa! Did you just mulligan away Severe and Ruin Runner? Your best cards in the matchup? Looking at the hands here, not the greatest hand for no. Team Poland. Doesn't have a Draven, doesn't have. Oh, I guess you can just redraw Severe. Yeah, so here there is a lot of things to consider. So the first thing, do we want to play the Sentry? Like, this is very slow hand. We, You don't want to Mystic Shot this. You want to preserve Mystic Shot for important unit. If they take open pass, it's fine. Like, we know they have probably nothing to play, and they just want to uh, make us uh, pass the mana. Sentry is too valuable uh, to take a pass. Um, Ezreal obviously is too uh, like is good uh, for later on. We have very slow hand, we have nothing really to do. So, like, if they... Uh, like, playing... Sentry will get value later. So, taking... Like, consider they don't know open attack, it's very good for us. So, yeah, we burn three mana, They burn, we, we, we trade two mana for one. It's not the worst uh, with this hand. Because we have, like, it's really slow hand. And if they don't develop, they don't attack, we are very happy. Fantastic, he needs to curve into. As I uh, would just see a pass. Like, I, I love it. Ezreal is an option here, but Mercy's Hunter would obviously be a big deal. You don't want to play Ezreal so early on with Ezreal, but sometimes with the hands you're given, you kind of have to and try and get some value from it just from the, the Mystic Hunter generated, even as, as this part. Yeah, they wanted to get a Draven, uh, probably. Is it just the option? If Mercy's Hunter, if Mercy's Hunter's played. You have the beam to kill it, but then it's a, it's a good pass from them. But again, it's good pass for us because uh, of our hand. So it's yeah. pretty awkward here for this hand. Yeah, it's really it's a really difficult situation because if they play like next turn, we can just open pass, and if they play as a, if they play severe, we can break the spell shield. If they play Renekton, we can just kill it with the flock. Yeah, just the pass. Yeah, he's got a pass. Static shot comes in, and now I think as Poland, you just play extremely reactive. Now that both players have seven mana stored here, you're happy just continuing to pass yes. the static shock. Now you're able to react to the rock hopper attacking next turn if you want to, and even just use a static shock as a way to pop a spell shield on a Sivir if it is played now. Yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah, this, is, this is fantastic. Static shock here. Yeah, we have uh, the static shock was a really good top deck. Allows you to set up even a thermogenic beam here if you would wish to do so. Yeah, as and there is a thorns of the rose. That's actually really neat. And if troll chant or shape people who play as real draven is is the urge to play as real early on. A lot of times mm -hmm. the best uh, approach is to just keep him in hand. Yeah. Uh, especially you know considering this matchup where not only do they have stuff like rock cover, but they could be playing stuff like exhaust, which is really common too. So I really uh, I, I like this attack. Even yeah, you never block here, by the way. Like blocking here is a trollolololo. Nasty attacker here, and uh, dealing five damage. Because this is a with troll chant. Yeah, no like basically, they gave us a chance. They had a naughty hand, and uh, we have uh, like we didn't like we we basically kept three cards that were really good into matchup, but then we drew like one, two, three, four, five. Like this was a an okay draw, but we drew five bad cards in a row for the matchup. This, th this way, they gave us a chance actually to come back to the, the game. You never block here. Any matchup against Ezreal Draven is so, so massive. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a good chance to, uh, honestly, uh, go for the, the Static Shock again, potentially, or even just go for the, the Guile to pop the Spell Shield and then react with a, a, a Ravenous Flock onto the Sivir. You take six damage. 
But you, you, you reduce this is where you lost the game. You can also just play cool. The, the instead, the put that, Good to know. Uh, Thank you. At Mystic Shot range too, later. There, there's a lot of options, but I think maybe Arachne Sentry makes the most sense here. Just, just about the spell shield. Still important, there is no tribing to benefit from this three drop being played. It's probably not ideal if you're Shihu. Also, no way to, to cycle through your, you know, plays like Guile here with, a, you know, a Sun Dredger or a Rummage. Not an option right now either. I'm a big fan of Arachne Sentry. I think it makes the most sense. You prevent two damage, which can go a long way. Um, unless you, you really you want to play Ezreal this turn, in which you, in which you can justify the... But the problem is, like, it, bopping the spell shield and just doing that doesn't feel great. Yeah, Arachne Sentry is the best way. I like it. I really like this. Shapestone is scary. You have to. I think you have to respect the shape. Yeah. So here, I think you need to play the the flock. We ha you have to evaluate your hand. Like if we if you use here shaped stone, opponents still have five cards in the hand. Uh, they have turn three pass. They have no play. So we have to assume they either have uh, battle fury, uh, combat tricks, or heavy units. Uh, in this spot, we have no way of dealing with further units. Uh, if they keep developing. So and we have no development of our own. We have no pressure. We have nothing. Like best, like best case scenario, we have Ezreal coming down next turn uh, and we are doing nothing. So here, like, okay, if they have shaped stone, worst case scenario, we set up static shock for next turn. We're gonna take an extra eight damage. But best case scenario, if they don't have shaped stone, we are basically winning the game if we preserve this uh, flock. Because we have static for next turn, we can set up flock uh, for the potential Yeti, we can set up Mystic plus flock for the Sejuani or the 6 drop. Uh, so preserving here flock is crucial to winning the game with this hand. Instead? Yeah, uh, 100%. I think it's way too risky playing a Mystic Shot, not having it survive and just pushing Like worst case scenario what happens, we have the Static Shock for next turn if they have shaped here. Wasn't Gil an option? No, Gil is just worse the Spider. Like if you had, okay, so here, basically if this hand I had either Scorch Turf or Tri Beam, Flock would be correct. Because you can play, like, you have stuff to do. It would be completely fine. But you have no Scorch Turf, you have no uh, Tri Beam, you have no other uh, Flock, you have no Ramash to cycle this hand. You have to play, uh, yeah, you, of course, you have to play to your top decks. But with this hand, preserving Flock is actually crucial. You have to t evaluate uh, the hand to win the game. Yeah, like Shogo thinks that uh, the flock was better there because we drew the get. Like, if I knew that we'd gonna top deck Scorch Turf, like the on top only good top deck was another flock, Scorch Turf, or get excited. Uh, and uh, here, like, we can take open pass. They, if they don't develop, uh, we are fine into Battle Fury because we can remove the unit they play Battle Fury on, even with the Troll Chant. So obviously, we can just uh, take a pass here. Really happy about yeah, yeah that, may, that, that may have cost him the game. And this is, that this may is game have cost him the game. Of the semi. This is a decisive game to see who makes it to the final. That was a big decision to use the mystic shot instead. I'm not sure Poland feels like they're maybe no beam is doesn't kill a big unit. Beaming in this matchup, uh, when they okay, so when they played first troll chant, you have to assume they have second because the first troll chant was such a bad play from them. That means their hand must be like another troll chant and just like they must or uh. Or just a lot of uni? Nah, it's still bad. Like there is no way you use troll chant. It was just a grief play to tro uh, to block and troll chant with severe. You never do that. Uh, and then um, in this spot, like if you try beam and you run into troll chant with no, like if you use flock here, you have no removal afterwards on their open with like let's say. Uh, the oh the eight four plus eight plus eight damage yeah, if you beam and you fail to kill the unit, the beam is not a good like beam is a good on turn three turn four but past that time, it's not the best. I, I know ravenous flock is a very powerful resource, but ultimately it, oh man they took too much damage and now this ancient yeti is coming in for two mana. They can lead off with the omen hawk to give them a sense okay no we're fine and then they play the ancient yeti and all of a sudden they're, yeah they're going wide. So now the problem is, considering that uh, they've developed Hulk, we have to play something because they can play. Uh, we have not. We cannot kill Hulk with the. 
we cannot heal Hulk if they play uh, uh, Battle Fury on it, right? So we have to de actually develop Ezreal uh, to set up the... to get another Mystic shot and to get excited on Hulk in case of Battle Fury. This is... This is scary. This is very scary. And you have some of these health totals where you, you think, okay, they're at this health, I can use this spell and kill them no matter what, I can do this later on. But with Troll Chance, with Shape Stone, it happens where all your the things you had give, you know, had, kind of had for granted in your mind about how to react to these things later on, you can't react to them and then it's too much damage because you're too far behind now at 8 HP. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, honestly, if Finland played this correctly, we like no matter what line we took, we were losing against their hand. They just gave us a chance to win. Like this troll chant they cast here, I don't know, this was another tr big troll. If it wasn't for that mistake, yeah, that's a mistake. That's so big. Like, I, I like this Ezreal play. You just drop it and, and you try to uh, pick off the board a little bit here. But not only is there Troll Chant in their hand, they have a Fury of the North as well, which can allow them to bypass like more, most variants of removal. They may have to just Mystic Shot this Ancient Jetty to bluff the existence of a Scorched Earth and, and discourage them from committing into something like a Fury of the North. Mm -hmm. But maybe they just don't care, man. And like, okay, explain me this, okay, explain me this troll chant, please. Anyone. Can anyone explain this troll chant? Because honestly, I have no idea what is to, this supposed to accomplish. This way they gave us, basically they don donated us a card and they donated us a two mana. Because I still can't figure what, what it's supposed to do. They just gave us two mana for free. Like you want to them, you want us to Mystic Shot. Does le as level up? It's irrelevant. Even if as real levels up, who who gives a shit? Like we are at HHP. Like if you don't win next turn, you lose. Like we are literally winning the game if you don't kill us next turn. So what happens if you? Okay. So lo what you want to do? What's the correct play? What they should do? You wait for Ezreal to attack, you wait for Ezreal to Mystic Shot, and then you play Troll Chant on whatever unit we play the Mystic Shot on, yeah? Because this way you make us burn 2 mana. Burning 2 mana is far more valuable for you than preserving 1 HP and then getting 1 stack on Ezreal, obviously. They didn't want to lose Severe. How does this prevent losing Severe, what? And now this is very good for us because what happens? They have mana only for Battle Fury or two other tricks next turn. So if they have Battle Fury, we have to make sure we don't die to Battle Fury next turn because the, like the only way we die is either Exhaust plus uh, uh, Fury of the North or Battle Fury. They have two cards in the hand. We know this card is from the beginning of the game in the hand, yeah. So we can assume this is Battle Fury. So, the question is, can we deal with Battle Fury on Hulk? Yes, we do. Can we deal with the Battle Fury on the 5-5? Five five? No. But we can make them believe we can have Scorched Earth. And this deck, we never played Get Excited. So, when you are attacking with this deck, you always open attack, we block the Yeti with uh, Azrael, and then you play Battle Fury on Hulk, and then we Misty Get Excited Hulk, and we win the game from there. Yeah? So, all we needed to do... We needed uh, uh, basically to deal with Ruin Runner and make uh, the Yeti damaged. And we then, like they open attack, we block Yeti or we block Sivir, doesn't matter. And then we uh, kill the Hulk when they play Battle Fury on this. You know, spells that they don't need to have. That way everything is damaged, everything is vulnerable, and they can, and they can everything. Yeah, Kepada, but you don't win with Battle Fury. So that's, that's, that's the pro, that's, that's the thing. You, just, you lose if you play Battle Fury. That, that gives because, you okay, like hear me out. Would you play Battle Fury on Yeti, or would you play Battle Fury on uh, Hulk when you open attack and we blow and we block uh, Yeti? What would what unit would you play it on? Damaged Yeti on this against Ezreal Draven, and you know and you know that we didn't never run get excited in a deck. We like usually uh, Ezreal has no way of dealing with five HP unit. The undamaged. There is no way you wouldn't play Battle Fury on Hulk. I can guarantee you that. Maybe use the Omen Hawk to drag it. Oh, I just go for the Ravnus block though. 
Yeah, but you you had access to our previous lists. You know that we all the time we brought as Draven, we never had get excited in it. Like I don't, I don't, I, I be the. I not I don't I disbelieve that you wouldn't really run and just check our previous lists. You need Mystic Shot to have, to be able to act on the fast speed. Yeah, so that was two cars they actually needed to kill us. Because Battle Fury doesn't do anything. No, you need Mystic Shot to because Mystic Shot can play uh Like if you use Mystic Shot you die to Battle Fury. Guys remember we have to assume this is Battle Fury. We need to beat Battle Fury. And they just don't have enough damage output here. Maybe the bluff works. Maybe the threat of, of Scorched Earth uh, discourages them. But... I think if you don't play Sejuani, that means you're 100% gonna play Fury of the North, you know? I, I, there's, there's no reason not to. You're gonna, if there's gonna be a Scorched Earth, okay, there's a Scorched Earth, but there's no chance you don't, you don't try and go for it and try and present lethal. Looking at the options here, Static Shock has to be played to kill the Stiver, damage the Yeti, then you can get excited with the last remaining mana, but that's only gonna be pushing four damage onto the Yeti. I'm gonna go for the, for the get excited there, um, and and this this is the mind game here. If 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 they go for Fury of the North, if they go for Fury of the North on the Yeti, uh, the problem with this line of play is uh, another ravenous flock sets them back. So we could yeah. see a scenario in which Finland just is like, oh man, we just don't have the opening here. Maybe we should just wait, get this damage on them, and and use this Sejuani alongside the Fury of the North. It's all about the mind games. They have the lethal. Obviously, they don't have the information, and ravenous flock could very easily be a second copy, especially because they played it uh, preemptively, right? But if they go for it, it's over. They're going for it. Three sisters has been used. They're going for it. They're going for the kill. Area of the north has been used here onto the Sivir. The Sivir now going to be at five yeah. HP. So no way to kill this now with direct damage. No you way. need to it's have over. a kill spell with Scorched Earth or with Ravenous Flock. I think that was a uh, yeah. We played well and like just unlucky top deck. It's done. That one mystic shot instead of the Ravenous Flock could I think it is what decided this game that eight damage that was pushed through the last attack yeah. of the turn for Finland was massive. If, if, if they have without get a, uh, without exhaust, if that was shaped stone, I guess shaped stone was another top deck potentially only. Yeah, shaped stone and uh, would have done it as well. So two shaped stone and two uh, exhaust for uh, four outs. Two to one in a very intense series as they make it to the finals and they will be facing off against Turkey, the underdogs. That's fine that you believe so, Kepada. Like. Shogo thinks as well that way. I I disagree. I think we uh, did take correct line. But again, we are like we're all gamers, and like we play, we have different styles. And I believe uh, I I'm extremely greedy player, and uh, I like like I evaluated our hand. Like we had like we had only two scorched earth in the deck left, uh, because we don't run free. And uh, we had two flocks left, so we had four outs basically to come back, like to have potential removal for future. I really like the line, and the worst case scenario, we still have a good static shock, uh, considering that you already wasted a troll chant. They played troll chant, which uh, may like they, if they didn't throw away troll chant. Uh, I mean, again, that static shock was for the another their another attack. That that static shock was prepared for their another another attack. Attack. You don't need to use that static on the turn uh, on your attack. You want to pr like remember when you are at on your attack token against the, the, in this matchup. You want to use your slow type of spells. You want to preserve all the fast spell responses to opponent's attack. So static shock was prepared for their attack. And considering that uh, they uh, threw away trolls on there, uh, you no longer for the, you no longer go for the static shock play. Yeah. Again, uh, like outside of one match in the group stages, I'm very satisfied the way we played, and uh, yeah, definitely improved a lot. Like I'm very happy since the previous season, uh, how much uh, I improved as a player as well. I think I'm dumb?